Hey, welcome back guys to part 5 of our Learn WPF series I've been making. I'm not sure how long this will take, how many more episodes. Uh, I guess it just depends on how in-depth we're going to get with this calculator and how many different things we're going to do with it. And if you haven't started watching from the beginning, I recommend you doing that just because you can follow along that way. And this is a good project to learn. That's why I called it Learn WPF on the thumbnail here. And if you guys like this content, don't forget to hit subscribe. I've been getting a lot of um, subscribers recently, and I'm very thankful for that. And uh, yeah, let's just go right into it. So in the last episode, I'm trying to remember, it's actually been a while. I've been traveling a little bit. Yeah, in the last episode, what we did was we kind of cleaned up a little bit. One of the things we did was we bound the output text block uh, right here. We did a little bit of binding. Um, to this output string that we have right here. Uh, so that saves us a little bit of hassle, I guess, and it's good to know binding because it's very powerful in WPF. And I think what else we did was we added the operators um, except equals. We didn't put equals. So maybe we want to put that right here, actually. Let's go ahead and do that. And then what I want to do in this episode is actually have these work, right? So if I hit minus, if I hit 6 minus 3, and then I hit equals, I get the, um, the answer of 3, right? So let's copy this plus button, because we're going to use basically the same skeleton. This one's going to be equals button, uh, and then the click events going to be num button click for now and I'm going to actually I'm trying to think what the best way to do this is but I think I'm going to just make each one their own individual click event um, instead of it being another case in the switch statement I don't know you can do it however you like because now you know both ways but I think that's the way I am going to do it so this row is fine uh, it's the column however we want to move to put it right here. I don't know if I like this orientation with the equals right here. Uh, maybe in the future we might add another row just to make it look better, but I don't know. And if you're wondering why this one's blank in the last episode, there isn't really a good division. Of course, we could use the slash, but I wanted to use the actual division symbol, uh, and we had to use some, I forget what that's called, Unicode, I think is what they call it. Anyway. Uh, you have to do that in the code behind, not in the GUI here. So what I want to do is I want to do the 6 minus 3. Let's start with minus. And instead of the click num button, um, in order to get the options, I think we have to delete the double quotes. Oh, maybe I just got to put one, one double quote. Why is it doing this? Equals. There we go. All right, so we have to delete the equals and the quotes, and then we can get this new event handler pop up in Visual Studio. So we'll double click that, and it'll just take the name and then underscore click. And now if we go into, let's get out of here. Is this, why is this going on? Um, if we go into the code behind here, I'm going to minimize this whole method here for the num button click event. I'm just gonna kind of minimize that and get it out of the way. Because um, we don't care about that anymore. That that works fine. I now care about the minus button click. Now we have to think about, and I have to think about, how I am going to do this. So the first thing we want to do is we want to take the current value of the output. Because if we look at a calculator, let me bring up one. Okay, if I do 6 minus, and then if I hit 3, you can see that 6 disappears. And it does put it up here, but we're not going to do that in our app. Um, 6 disappear, so somewhere in the code behind we have to keep track of what the previous number was, right, the 6. And so what I want to do is I want to make a variable up here, and I am going to make it a double because it can be a decimal point. Right? I could put 6.5 minus 3, and let's just call this like temp or something. And right now off the bat it's going to be 0, um, because what if what if the user just hits, at the very beginning, they just do minus 3. It's going to be 0 minus 3. So I think that makes sense to make it equal to 0. All right, so the first thing we want to do is uh, we can do an if statement. Oh, 
I didn't mean to do that. Whoa, I didn't mean to do that either. So we can do an if statement, right? We can say if, um, what do we want to say? If output, right? Am I doing this correctly? Yeah. If output is not equal to an empty string, um, then we can fill in this temp variable with the output value in double form, right? Because right now it's a string. And in order to take a string that's a number and into something else, whether it's a double or an integer or whatever, uh, you want to do that which you're turning it into. So we're turning it into a double, double dot parse. And then we pass in the string. Um, this will parse through the string and extract the number value from that. And in this case, we're going to extract output. And we're going to set temp equal to that, right? So temp, not term, temp is going to equal double dot parse output. So if output is a string and it's three, right, it's going to turn three into a double and it's going to store in temp. Okay, uh, so now that we have that, um, after they click it, we then clear the output. I think that's what they do. Let me run this again. So six minus three. Yeah, okay. So when I hit the next one, it's going to clear. Um, so let's just go ahead and clear output now. So we're going to do output is going to equal an empty string now. And I think that's all we have to, oh, and something I guess, okay, something we do have to keep track of is what kind of operator they hit. Interesting. So I might, I might make it another string and call it operation. Yeah, I didn't really think about this. And in our case, it's going to be something like this minus. That makes sense. Because if we do 6 minus 3, when we hit minus, it keeps track of the previous output value. Um, and it also clears. So you, when I press 3, that shows up. But then when I hit equal, it then does the operation. It's not when I hit minus, it does the operation. OK. So that's interesting. So now, uh, let's just keep operation as an empty string. And now we need to, I think that's all we need to do for the minus button. We'll come back if I need to do something else. But I think now that we need to do is do something for the equals. So instead of num button click, whoops, we're going to do equals, and it's going to be its own event handler. And this one, we are probably going to have to make a switch statement. So case, or not case, sorry, so it's switch. Sorry, I'm a little tired today. I don't know. I drank some coffee, but sometimes that doesn't always do the trick. Uh, we're going to base it off of the string of operation. And I guess something else we need to do in the minus is change operation equal to minus. And we need to keep track of this. We say, okay, well, if the operation is minus, that means they, they previously hit subtract that minus button. So if the case is minus, this is where we do the operation. Um, let me put a break so those squigglies go away. Okay, so let me think about how we're going to do this. So output, or now let's make a, Hmm. Let's make a temporary variable. Um, output, and let's call it like output temp or something. And right now, that's going to be a double. And this is where we do the operation. We do blank minus blank. Um, so the first one is going to be temp, temp minus, and then whatever the current output is. So we can do double dot parse again. And you might want to do this in your own line. You might want to make a uh, separate line with a different variable. So it's a little easier to follow, but I'm going to do it this way. So it's going to be temp minus double dot parse. And now we're going to take the output value currently. Does that make sense? Temp minus 
Yeah. And set it equal to this, right? Because temp is going to be, maybe, it could be the same number, but it's probably going to be a different number than the current output. It can hit 3 minus 3, but typically it will be different. Okay, so now we have the output value, but now we need to make it a string, right? Because currently it's a double. So we do output is going to be equal to output temp dot to string. So now it's going to turn that double into a string. So let's hit start and see if this even works. <laughs> I'll be very surprised if right off the bat this works. But I think my logic makes sense. It does to me. Um, so let's do 6. And then when I hit minus, it will take that value, put it in temp. Actually, let's, let's put a breakpoint right here. So if you don't know a breakpoint, um, you can click this little gray bar right here. And basically, when it reaches this point in the code, it'll just stop. So you can go ahead and analyze uh, different values of different um, properties here, like the temp. So we paused it. And what was I going to do? I was going to hit minus. So here you can see we made it here because the yellow arrow. And it's paused. And now we can hover over temp, and it'll say 6, which makes sense, right? Because Whoops, this is the wrong one. This is the real calculator. Where did ours go? Maybe it won't let me look at it while it's uh, paused. But anyway, that's what I hit. I hit 6 earlier. So that makes sense. We'll hit continue here. And we hope that the output clears. And this operation, as you can see right now, it's an empty string, but it will go and equal minus. So let's hit continue. Edits. I didn't make an edit. I don't remember making an edit. Whatever. So let's remove this breakpoint. Um, it looks like that works. So if we do 6 minus, and it didn't do anything that time. All right, so I figured out our binding was not working actually at all. Um, and it looked like it did because in our code we actually have, we're setting the text property of the output text block to output. And that's why it looked like it was working. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to forget the binding. We even attempted that. So let's go back and let's just delete this. And maybe in a different series we'll get more in depth with binding. Um, it's been a while since I messed with this stuff. And uh, let's go ahead and copy this piece of text or this piece of code right here. And let's put it right under where we set the new value of output. And now it should actually update in the view. So I think everything here looks good. Let's go ahead and hit start. And let's make sure uh, that it works. So let's do 9 minus 7 is equal to 2. Cool. So that works. And there's no clear button. Maybe we'll put a clear button right here so we can clear the values, obviously. But that part works. So if we run it again, let's try a different. Let's do like 10 minus 7 is equal to 3. Cool. So that actually works. Um, I think that's all I'm going to do in this video. This, this actually took longer just to do one than I expected. I, uh, I want to make a clear button in the next video and do the rest of the three operators that we didn't do. And hopefully you guys are enjoying this and learning along the way. I know I'm learning already, learning that my binding didn't even work. <laughs> um, but I will see you guys in the next video. Take care.